evening and welcome to Tinkering with Ed Kellar. My list of things to collect includes some CRT TVs, mostly to keep one around for retro gaming, but also for posterity. The biggest issue with those is of course also their main feature, the CRT. There are no new ones around anymore and the existing ones are getting weaker with age. To diagnose and possibly prolong a slow death, they made CRT testers and rejuvenators, so I just had to get my paws on one of those. The device I found on eBay is a Mütter BMR90 or BMR90, a German-made mobile unit. It seemed complete in the auction and comes with a handful of adapters, which is why I picked it. Closer inspection revealed that two of the mode buttons are stuck and prevent the others from working. I thus have a reason to open it besides just cleaning. light bulbs in here. Weird. The wiring loom is tied with wax yarn, a technique I haven't seen since I learned it in my apprenticeship in the early 90s, which is in stark contrast to the packing tape that holds the light bulbs in place. Meh. It seems that the bulbs are in here to limit the current draw of some circuits. Dim bulb is the concept here. No LED replacements for those. First time I see it inside a device, though. After removing the little PCB that holds the mode switches, I managed to get off the caps. They have an orange indicator that is hidden behind two half domes when the button is up and peeks out when the button is pressed. Not strictly required, but still nice to have. The domes in the stuck switch became loose and needed refitting. Looking at the PCB revealed another issue. There is one resistor on here, piggybacking on the switches. And one side is floating. Seems it has never seen any solder. Took some time to find a schematic and then find out where it was supposed to connect to. Despite the fact that the capacitors are a decent brand and the device is not as old as the others I deal with, I decided to replace them. One measured quite weird and had some residue on one of the pins. Might have been flux, but I'm not taking any chances when it comes to high voltage.
deep buttons were a bit of a problem. These springs are supposed to be held in place by the actual shaft. I didn't realize those were broken when I removed the caps. To fix that, I glued in a piece of plastic, cut from a dowel. Now the buttons are sticking out slightly further, but at least they work. I cleaned the bulbs from the packing tape residue and checked the potentiometers. Normally I'd desolder them and open them up for cleaning and inspection, but with the single color wiring loom and a totally spaghetti style circuit diagram, I'm not comfortable removing random wires. After giving the case a good wash and dry, I'm ready to put the unit back in. The adapter cable was an issue. The plug has seen better days. Time for some OpenSCAD and 3D printing action. That was slightly too shallow. Take two. I tried to find more adapters for the device but the company that made it is now gone and the only ones for sale are the ones that come with the occasional device. So making myself a universal adapter. Not as comfortable as the pre-made ones, but it should work just fine. basic theory of operation is as follows. Connect the tube as it would be connected in a TV and run it with some commonly accepted voltages. The heaters are usually either 6 or 12 volts, while the high voltage side is in the kilovolt range, but it doesn't need to be as high just to check if the tube elements are working.
the tester can check for shorted elements in the tube, cathode to filament and cathode to gate 1 as well as gate 1 to gate 2. If you leave out the deflection coils on the outside and don't care about the phosphor on the screen, it's pretty much a 3-in-1 pentode for RGB and a regular pentode for black and white. Note that it also repairs a short by discharging a high voltage capacitor across the elements and blasting away whatever is causing the short. Well, better than throwing the tube out I guess. The PMR90 can also measure the current through the electron guns. This helps with predicting how much life is left in the tube as well as characterizing differences in RGB beams to make color adjustments a bit less guesswork. Later digital TVs had a control circuit built in for that, so they ought to adjust. Finally, and most controversial, the rejuvenation part will overheat the cathode and thus actually melt the coating that is responsible for emitting electrons. The rejuvenation buttons will then stop the heating and apply some anode voltage to drag away any impurities from the molten and now hardening cathode to the getter on the anode like the factory did. Since most of the other devices don't include the anode, this one should achieve longer lasting results. There is a lengthy explanation in the manual, but it is in German and chemist. And to test things, I have a patient on the, um, uh, under the bench. After hooking up everything, I was able to verify that the tube is in fact working. I don't trust the readings as such, since the tube is a trinitron and the readings are for regular color tubes, but at least I know that the CRT tester is up and running. I am also aware that rejuvenating a CRT might boost the quality at the expense of overall lifetime, but these devices aren't here for long periods of operation anyway. If I can make a TV useful again for what used to count as a year, it's going to be preserved in the retro scene for decades maybe. And that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed this meta project. See you next time! Zuerst kristallisieren die Calciumteile, dann die Strontiumteile und danach das Barium. Und wenn sie nicht gestorben sind, dann strahlen sie noch heute.